Welcome to Uncaged, the show that celebrates thought leadership from today's top business leaders. The program provides a voice to amazing executives from around the globe who are shaping the world of business today and mapping the path to the commerce of tomorrow. Today, we're speaking with Gopal Swami. Hey, Gopal, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm very, very well. I'm excited to talk to you about this. Gopal is the CEO of Conductive. Uh, they say that they do better, faster, fairer lending. Um, they are a company that increases the approval rates for lenders by aggregating missing data. Anyone who's looked at the topic of lending and borrowing knows that anything we can do to reinvent it is going to be a helpful thing. And Gopal is going to tell us where, where Conductive sits today and what they're doing. But before we get there, Gopal, tell me a little bit about yourself and your career. Sure. Thanks for asking. Uh, so I'm a serial entrepreneur. This is my third business. Uh, I exited. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> I had one successful exit, which was my last business. I'm very excited about that. Happy that that happened. Um, but also have my share of failures, uh, learning moments. Um, beyond that, uh, you know, I, I did spend a few years as a management consultant um, at, a, at a top management consultancy, and that was very helpful. But entrepreneurship and specifically tech entrepreneurship is definitely something that speaks to me, and that's why I do what I do. Excellent. And, and it looks like you're tackling the topic of figuring out a better way to lend. Tell us a little bit about what Conductive is up to. Yes, we're definitely tech, we're lending technology. And we are very much talking about what we would argue is better decision making when it comes to loans, faster decision making, and more equitable decision making. And so what the company offers is a widget that plugs into the technology systems of pretty much any bank or credit union or fintech lender. And the widget acts as a way to get at or a single API to many, many different kinds of data sources. Mm -hmm. And these data sources provide data that can supplement what is being used today, which is the FICO or the credit score, to paint a more accurate and more complete picture of the individual who's trying to borrow. And as we have discussed, this is for all of us as individuals and small businesses and even bigger businesses, but it is, I think, particularly relevant and important to folks who fall into low or middle income um, households or are lower middle income individuals. Because yeah. those are the folks that disproportionately get left out of the credit system and out of the lending system. Yeah, I, I, uh, I love what you're working on. And I would say that, you know, consumers that perhaps don't fit into, you know, they're not the, the round peg in the round hole, don't, don't do well in our present day lending system. And I think it's really important, maybe if you can put it in, into context, why this broader set of data is so important. Sure. So, you know, the, without getting too deep into the actual data sources, right? As I said before, the lenders very much want to have a clearer picture of who we are as borrowers or our small businesses or bigger businesses, who those businesses are as borrowers, people who want credit cards, loans, mortgages, um, all kinds of different financial products. The data that they have is good, but the, the key phrase to think about is it's not permissioned data in the sense that at the time of the loan application, I as the applicant or I as the small business or I as the business, I'm not in real time permissioning somebody and giving them the key to unlock the latest, most, data, most accurate and freshest data mm -hmm. or data that's a little tricky to get. And so that's mm -hmm. one piece of it is it's a huge piece. It's that it's permission. And then in terms of the nature of the data, you know, the credit bureaus, they don't really understand my personal cash flows or the cash flows of my business. And they don't understand things like, have I been a good payer for my utility bills that speak to the character of the individual, right. which is something that is part of the five C's of credit things that lenders take into account. And the last piece, of course, is identity. There's various ways to verify that I am, in fact, who I say I am, and I'm not trying to commit fraud. And often, because we move a lot or we have other issues, there are false positives that can be addressed in real time if you can point to the right data source. 
I think you know, all of the things are, are so key. It, it, some of those elements, some, some of those variables that you're highlighting are, I would say, almost beacon variables in terms of whether someone's a good lend, a good good borrower, and, and will will pay you back probably more so than someone who sits on a ton of assets. But but I I I, I love what you're working on, and and go Paul. I mean, you're a seasoned entrepreneur. Uh, this is your what your third uh, go at this whole thing. I noticed that you started the business in 2020. I think probably as a seasoned entrepreneur, you're going to have a quite an interesting perspective of what it was like to build a company during, during the pandemic. Yes. Um, well, to, to be short and frank, it was, it was quite difficult. Um, I think that the one takeaway was we had to take a really good look at what we were doing and look at two things. One, like, what are we doing? Truly, how are we helping? How are we helping the lender? How are we helping the borrower individual, right? And two, two uh, how are we messaging this? And uh, we really, from a messaging perspective, had to be very clear on, is this problem and are we, are we framing this solution in a way that um, it is not a back burner problem or a side burner problem, but it's a front burner problem. Mm -hmm. And so, for lenders in 2020, 2021, um, and now in 2022, it really came down to COVID mm -hmm. and permission data. And so once we were able to speak to the fact that COVID is actually creating more pressure to lend and that individuals and businesses are willing to permission this alternative data, and those are proven facts, it became much easier to raise money and more importantly, to, to close customers. I I just have a side question. So so the companies that are utilizing the conductive uh, data, are you seeing that it's changing the way that they approach um, borrowers? Well, I'll be honest. There are two types of customers that conductive has. The first type um, is, is one that says. Look, I'm, I'm looking for conductive or too conductive to help me look again at people who may be mislabeled right. as subprime or near prime, but actually function as prime or even super prime. Mm -hmm. And those folks are, are really looking uh, for very much that. You know, they don't want to touch how they look at borrowers too much. Mm -hmm. It's a fairly conservative approach. Then there are other conduct, uh, conductive customers who are saying, no, I want to stretch what we call the, the buy box just a bit or moderately. And those folks are saying, yes, what is the additional data that I should be looking at, that I could be looking at, and how do I look at it? Right. So how can I go for a larger audience? Right. right. And what's interesting is it's not always the case that those two groups are completely exclusive. There is some overlap. So, you know, you've gone through the process of building a business. I mean, tell us some insights and learnings of how you guys just worked through behind the scenes some of the challenges during the pandemic. Um, it, it frankly started before the pandemic. Yeah. We were very careful. Before we started the business, we built prototypes of what we were going to sell. And we went to conferences and asked questions. And what do you think of this? What problem does this solve for you? Why would you even care about this? Right. And those learnings were very valuable when it came to building the company. Um, in terms of when conducted, excuse me, when COVID hit and then conducted had to sort of adapt, we did the same thing in terms of going back to the folks we were speaking with and asking two basic questions. The first one is, what is it like to be a lender? Now? Right. And two, what is your top problem? And when we heard consistency back, from that, we were able to, as I said before, take a good look at the software and the solution and say, how exactly are we solving that problem? And two, message it appropriately so that, you know, we weren't, we were making sure that we were truthfully solving the problems that the lenders had now during COVID. Mm -hmm. When you say consistency, what do you specifically mean um, by that? Sure. Well, when I'm asking the prospects at that time, you know, what your big problem is. I'm, I'm really looking for a similar phrasing. And mm. what we heard was the, the top problem by far was we as lenders have more money than ever, more cash than ever 
in our checking accounts and our savings accounts. Right. But because of COVID and the CARES Act and some limitations around reporting back to the credit bureaus missed payments, mm -hmm. there is less, there was less trust in FICO and credit uh, scores, which, which frankly are, are still the, the barometer, the tool that people use to lend with the score. So if there's a lot of money and there's a need to get that money out, but there's less trust for temporarily, right? For mm -hmm. because of COVID, that is the thing that we heard consistently across the board. And we kind of put two and two together and said, well, wait a minute, we are anyway conducted as supplementing FICO. Right. And so if you have all this money and it's creating all this pressure to lend, but you can't lend, aren't you going to use this alternative data and then start lending? And people said, oh, I, yeah, thanks for lining that up that way. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll we, now you're in the consideration. Uh, I love it. I love it. Well, I mean, when you go out to the folks this year, 2022, you know, you're taking this proposition to the marketplace. You know, are those still the same major topics with them or are, what, what, what's top of mind right now? I think they are very much top of mind. However, the mindset and the buying behaviors and the considerations have changed a little bit. I think what's happening now is those two factors are certainly in play, but a third factor has, has sort of uh, is bearing down on us. And that is that um, you, you really have to be very digital. Many of these lenders, 10,000 lenders in North America prided themselves on having a human touch. And that's a good thing. It's a differentiator. But when you're not able to go into the branch, that differentiator is lost. And so we're right. sort of past this tipping point now where even the smaller and the more hands-on lenders are saying, no, we need to be completely digital. And so now those three factors come together and Conductive is able to say, hey, look, uh, we know that this is a new sort of world when it comes to lending. Um, and we are going to help you with all those pieces. And the last thing that is, has happened is the administration, federal government and state governments, they are asking questions of the lender saying, what are you doing to lend more equitably? And we have those questions coming in when Conductive can come in and say, hey, look, we can, number one, we can increase revenues, help you make more money. Number two, we can streamline your operations by digitizing some types of manual work. But three, we're able to increase your equity in terms of the amount of equitable lending you can do. That combination has been the shift Mm -hmm. And it has been what has attracted a lot of lenders to conduct it. Has there been, I just, I'm curious, has there been anybody that has done what the auto insurance businesses have done, where they've essentially offered rebates by giving them the ability to collect more data? It is, if I'm making sense, like the, I think the progressive model was that they, they track your, they put a kind of a track on whether you're going to the speed limit or, or whatever it is, right? So there have been some efforts. I mean, I, I think notably some of the credit bureaus have, have reached out. I mean, I certainly got these emails saying, Gopal, would you please connect your Netflix payment history to us? Wow. Or would you, you know, so on and so forth. I think I, that's very admirable. I think the challenge though is most of us, when we get asked by a credit bureau to give more data, we, we probably feel like it's big brother. <laughs> so it's very good point. Very, very good hard point. for us to buy that. Yeah, very good point. Well, listen, Gopal, it's been amazing talking to you. We've been speaking with Gopal Swami. He's the CEO of Conductive, which is a company that increases approval rates for lenders by aggregating missing data. I would also say that it's really supporting using data to make us have a more diverse and equitable lending system. And so uh, it's really exciting what Gopal and his team are working on. If someone wanted to reach you, Gopal, where should they find you? Uh, you can find us at uh, Conductive with no E, so Conductive.co, uh, of course, on LinkedIn as well. And I just wanted to say before we go that, you know, your, your points are exactly correct. And what's very interesting about the industry is that these 10,000 lenders in North America they all have different lending cultures, processes, and technology stacks. And what, what we're really happy to be able to provide is a solution that has graduated entry points. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much crawl, walk, run. It's more depending on where you're at and where you're trying to go. This is, we have an entry point that makes it very easy to adopt. And so right. all of that's on the website. Um, and, and if you go there, 
you'll find a form where you can contact me and would love to chat with you more about it or somebody from our sales team. Yeah. Well, listen, Gopal, thank you so much. I, I think that uh, hopefully every lender uh, will we'll start to embrace the broader data story and the broader way of thinking about lending. And I uh, really love what you're working on. Thank you so much for being on Uncaged and we look forward to having you back. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it.